So, good morning, uh, welcome back to uh, the NPTEL course on classics in total synthesis. In the last lecture, we talked about uh, total synthesis of progesterone. Actually, it is a semi synthesis of progesterone from diastenin, and we also discussed a little bit about the history of diastenone and how Marker went to uh, Mexico and then got the roots which essentially gave tons of uh, diastenin and from diastenin how we converted that into progesterone. So, later the formation of syntax company all that we discussed. So, today what we will do we will move to another steroid uh, called uh, estrone ok this is a female sex hormone as you know. So, this is one of the three female sex hormones estrone, estradiol and estriol ok. See if you look at estrone and estradiol you can see the carbonyl group is reduced ok. Already you have a hydroxyl group in the form of phenol in A ring and in addition we have another hydroxyl group in estradiol. Whereas, in estriol you have one more hydroxyl group ok. So, these are the three uh, you know uh, estrogen molecules, uh, but what we will do we will talk only about the total synthesis of estrone today and estrone initially it was isolated ok. Initially it was isolated in the form of estrone sulphate from urine ok. People have collected lot of cow's urine and from that they have done huge column, huge column to get estrone sulphate ok. And from synthetic point of view if you look at this molecule there are 4 contiguous chiral centers that is the first and foremost challenge you see. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 there are 4 contiguous chiral centers. In addition you have an angular methyl group and the ring junction ok the ring junction if you look between B C and C D they are trans anti relationship ok. So, this is something which is uh, quite difficult particularly when you talk about the hydrindenone cell skeleton. Hydrindenone generally the cis relationship is more stable than the trans one. Okay. So, these are the challenging aspects when you talk about total synthesis of estrone. So far the first synthesis of estrone was reported by Targo in uh, early 60s in tetrahedral letter and the whole synthesis involved only 6 steps. The whole synthesis involved only 6 steps and their strategy is based on they will start with A B ring. Okay. They will start with A B ring first, then they will add this D ring A B and then they will add A B D ring, then they will construct the C ring. So, they start with A B ring, bring the D ring, then form the, the middle ring that is C ring. Okay. And as I mentioned it was only 6 steps and that time it was considered one of the best synthesis and more importantly this route is still followed in industry ok. This route is still followed in industry to make a stone and related steroids. The key reactions involved in the total synthesis stone are 1 the acid catalyzed cyclization, acid catalyzed cyclization to get the C ring. Second the stereoselective reduction of dienes there are 2 double bonds which are formed at the end of acid catalyzed cyclization. I will discuss that when I go into the uh, total synthesis. Then the reduction stereoselective reduction of this diene to get the, the correct geometry of the ring junction ok. So, let us see how uh, he started this. He started with uh, readily preparable starting material called 6 methoxy 1 tetralone 6 methoxy 1 tetralone and addition of vinyl grignard ok addition of vinyl grignard gave this tertiary allylic alcohol addition of vinyl grignard gave this tertiary allylic alcohol. Now, he treated this with 2 methyl 2 methyl cyclopentane 1 3 dione ok 2 methyl cyclopentane 1 3 dione in the presence of base even use triton B. Now, this undergoes a substitution reaction like this ok. So, what he got was this double bond. Next is one of the key reactions 
Now acid catalyzed cyclization. So when you treat it with acids, first the double bond migrates here, then intramolecular Friedel-Crafts like reaction takes place to give this dye. Okay. The intermediate here is this copper. Okay. This is the first step that is uh, after the migration of this double bond then intramolecular fluorocarbs like reaction will give this intermediate then dehydration will take place to give this diene, dienone. Okay. Once you have this dienone you have to selectively reduce this double bond, trisubstituted double bond then you have to reduce the tetrasubstituted double bond. So these two were done individually. First the tri-substituted double bond was reduced under hydrogenation condition in the presence of triethyl silane. Okay, triethyl silane also can give hydrogen. First, as I said, this 5 membered ring, the tri-substituted double bond was reduced. Okay. For the next one, tetra substituted, you need stronger condition. So, trifluoroacetic acid and triethyl silane was used to get the corresponding, you can see trans and then trans okay, system. So once you have that what is left is to remove the methyl group or cleave the aryl methyl ether. So that was easy by treating with BBR3 to get S2. So overall if you look at the total synthesis of S2 reported by Torgo is only 6 steps. Okay and involves two key reactions, one is acid catalyzed cyclization and then stereoselective reduction of the dye. However, the starting material 6-methoxy-1 tetralone, okay, 6-methoxy-1 tetralone was prepared in few steps but all in good yield. The first step was the federal crafts acylation, federal crafts acylation of anisole with succinic anhydride. Okay. So that gave this keto carboxylic acid. Okay. That gave this keto carboxylic acid. So now if you do Clemenson reduction, if you do Clemenson reduction, as you know Clemenson reduction is known to reduce the keto group to corresponding alkane. So this ketone was reduced under Clemenson reduction condition to get the CH2. Now from here to here from here to here can be done in two steps or even in a single step. In single step means you have to use polyphosphoric acid. Okay, polyphosphoric acid is known to cyclize the carboxylic acid and ar ar aromatic ring. However, uh, many times it gives poor yield. Instead, what one can do is one can convert the carboxylic acid to acid chloride. One can convert the carboxylic acid to acid chloride. So once you have the acid chloride, then intramolecular fluorocarbs acylation can be done with Lewis acid. Okay. So the second step is the intramolecular fluorocarbs acylation. Once you have that then the keto group is deoxygenated, the carbonyl group is deoxygenated with hydrogen and the copper chromate and the last step is the regioselective, regioselective benzylic oxidation with chromium trioxide. So except the last step, all other steps if you see all the remaining 4 steps gave excellent yield. Okay. So this is one of the key starting materials, 6-methoxy-1 tetralone is one of the key starting materials in the synthesis of all the steroids, almost all the steroids as well as you know many other natural products. Okay. That is why I thought it is better to discuss how this 6-methoxy-1 tetralone was prepared. Okay. So, the synthesis reported by Targo was racemic synthesis. So then people thought if one can use the same strategy but somewhere if one can introduce chirality then that will be asymmetric synthesis. So E.J. Corey uh, it took this compound, now you have two ketones is not it, two ketones one can call this is symmetrical one, this he reduced with his CBS catalyst, 
okay, CBS catalyst, Kore Bakshi, Shibata catalyst, with that catalyst he could get this compound. Okay, now you see it was racemic and he could get two chiral centers fixed, okay, two chiral centers okay, using this CBS catalyst. Then what is there? You have to do the acid catalyzed cyclization, isn't it? So, you did the acid catalyzed cyclization and then oxidize, oxidize the alcohol okay, to ketone. Afterwards, in two steps that is uh, using hydrogenation and uh, trifluoroacetic acid and triethylsilane, one can convert this into estro followed by removal of the methoxy group. Okay. So, in 3 steps this can be easily converted into estrone, but the difference is this is synthesis of estrone of 1 enantiomer. Okay. Here it is plus enantiomer has been synthesized and for that the important reaction is the CBS catalyst mediated reduction of 1,3 diketone to get exclusively this size. Okay. This is the CBS catalyst. The CBS catalyst is prepared from diphenylprolinol. The CBS catalyst is prepared from diphenylprolinol. Okay. Then you will move to two more very interesting total synthesis of estrone. One was reported by Lutz Tietze. Here, what he has cleverly used is a double Heck reaction, double Heck reaction to make the or connect the A ring with C ring. Okay. What did he do? So, his idea is if, if you want to make a stone then he thought if, if we can introduce these two double bonds, hmm, if we can introduce these two, two double bonds and these two double bonds he felt can be, can be introduced by Heck reaction. Okay. His idea is like this the double Heck reaction can be done on this substrate. Okay. Okay. So, this is actually when you see this there is, there is only one Heck, okay. that is only one Heck. Okay. The second Heck is obtained from this. So, this will be the first Heck, okay. this will be the first Heck reaction and this will be the second Heck reaction. So, using a double Heck reaction in the same part, one can get from this compound directly this. That was his original idea. Okay. And how did he make this starting material, particularly this one? He made from the Hages Parish ketone. Okay. He started from this and then selective reduction of the 5 membered ketone and protection of that alcohol as tetrabutyl ether gave this compound. Then one can reduce the enone. Okay. Okay, here you have to do it at sub 0, okay, you have to do it at sub 0 and 0.25 equivalent okay. and this can be done at room temperature hmm. and of course you have to use cerium chloride otherwise the double bond also will be reduced and this is called Luce reduction is not it, Luce reduction is nothing but reduction of alpha beta unsaturated ketone to corresponding allylic alcohol with sodium borohydride and cerium chloride. Okay. So, now you got this allylic alcohol and this on treatment with formic acid, formic acid, pyridine and acetic anhydride you get the corresponding formate. Now, the double bond migration that is you know allylic, okay, now you see this is allylic one, isn't it? so you can use palladium catalyzed the allylic uh, transposition and you transfer the double bond at the same time this is being replaced, the acetate, the formate is replaced by hydrogen. Okay. So, basically if you look at this in pi steps, Hages Parish ketone can be converted into one of the starting materials, one of the starting materials required for estrone. Okay. For the other starting material, you have to start from the corresponding aldehyde, okay, this aldehyde. So, it is a commercially available aldehyde, you take this aldehyde, then do a Wittig reaction. Okay. So, you have to do a Wittig reaction to get the corresponding cis vinyl bromide. Okay. Take this 
and already you made this compound okay do the double Heck reaction. So, when you do the double Heck reaction this is the first one first Heck product and the second Heck will give this compound as the major isomer okay. Now you can do the hydrogenation followed by oxidation you will get corresponding S2 okay. The third synthesis the third synthesis of S2 not you know order wise but third synthesis which we are going to talk about involves a 2 plus 2 plus 2 cyclo addition okay of 3 triple bonds okay we can call it as cyclo trimerization okay cyclo trimerization also one can call. So, 3 triple bonds will trimerize to form an aromatic ring. So, that was the key reaction. So, in the literature it is well known that if you use cobalt carbonyl cyclopentadienyl cobalt carbonyl or if you use Wilkinson catalyst this type of 2 plus 2 plus cyclo addition can be easily achieved. So, his idea is this first the B and C ring B and C ring will be obtained by an intramolecular diels cell reaction intramolecular diels cell reaction what is an intramolecular diels cell reaction so here if you heat it it will undergo first a, an intramolecular electrocyclic ring opening so this is nothing but cyclobutene isn't it so it can undergo intramolecular electrocyclic ring opening to give this intermediate okay. So, now this can undergo a 4 plus 2 IMDA type 1 that is intramolecular diels salt reaction type 1 that will give you our this come okay. Now, this can be obtained by the 2 plus 2 plus 2 cyclo addition reaction this is it this is a Alky, alkyne, this is an alkyne, this is an alkyne. There are 3 alkynes that can undergo cyclo trimerization to give the, the precursor to electrocyclization followed by IMDA type 1 reaction. And this can be obtained if you see this, if you cleave this bond, then this will be an electrophile. Now, one can add vinyl copper, okay. If you add vinyl copper, followed by conjunct with this you will get this product ok this is commercially available. So, once you have this then you can do the cyclotrimerization and then followed by heating should give the electrocyclic, electrocyclic ring opening and 4 plus 2 cycloaddition products. So, now let us see how the diene was prepared diene. So, you started with the known compound and then when you add excess N butyl lithium at least 3 equivalents of N butyl lithium is required 3 equivalents of N butyl lithium is required. So, first these 2 acyclic protons will be lithiated followed by removal of the propargelic proton. So, you get a tri lithio species tri lithio species then you open with ethylene oxide you get the corresponding alcohol ok. This can be converted into the iodide first by treating with tosyl chloride to get the tosyl tosylate, then Fingelstein reaction with sodium iodide and methyl ethyl ketone, you get corresponding iodide. Okay, so this is done, and already as I told you, the tri trimethyl silyl acetylene is a known compound, so that can be directly used. So, for the other other fragment you have to start from 2 methyl cyclopentenone, 2 methyl cyclopentenone then you carry out the vinyl 1 4 addition with vinyl magnesium bromide and cuprous iodide and quench the resultant enolate ok, quench the resultant enolate with the TMS chloride ok. So, now what you got is you have done the vinyl 1 4 addition, but the enolate is trapped the enolate is trapped as TMS ether. Okay. So, the OTMS can be cleaved OTMS can be cleaved with either methyl lithium or lithium in ammonia. So, that what will happen you will generate the lithium enolate. 
Once you generate the lithium ion light, you can quench with the iodide which we have already discussed. So, the iodide already as I said can be prepared from this alcohol. Now, you treat with lithium ammonia, you generate the enolate, lithium enolate and quench with this iodide and you get this as the major isomer. Okay. So, now you have this, the next step is the cyclotrimerization that is 2 plus 2 plus cycloaddition. So, this is normally achieved by either Wilkinson catalyst or cyclopentadienyl cobalt dicarbonyl compound. So, that reaction worked well. As you can see here, that led to this benzocyclobutane. This is called benzocyclobutane, and this is one of the very good precursors for electrocyclic ring opening followed by intramolecular Diels-Alt reaction. So, once you have that, next you have to heat it. So, heating gives the electrocyclic ring opening dying and that immediately undergoes intramolecular Diels-Alt reaction to give these two products. One the intramolecular Diels-Alt reaction product, the other one, the other one is the isomerized product this one. You get back the starting material, but this is isomerized. Nevertheless, if you heat this further, if you heat this further, it gets converted into the expected product. Okay, that means the 56 percent which you are getting is converted into the expected product in 95 percent yield. So, that means close to you know how much you get, close to 70 percent you get this as the product. Okay. So, with this next step should be to remove this TMS group and exchange this TMS with hydroxyl group. Okay. One of the TMS should be selectively removed or you can call that as proto desilylation whereas, the other TMS group should be converted into OH. So, before actually he tried to do this reaction, he thought it is better to use a model system and then study whether the silicon can be easily selectively removed. So, you took a model system that is a tetraline system and then first he tried with the palladium uh, trifluoroacetate, okay. but what he got was the mixture. So, then he thought okay, this is not a good method. Then he used first acetylation, it is well known in the literature if you have TMS group attached to aryl ring, TMS group attached to aryl ring, then if you treat with acetyl chloride, aluminum chloride, the TMS will be replaced by acetyl group. That means, TMS will be replaced and then you are putting this acetyl group. Okay. So, that was the first step and the second step is the bayer williger oxidation. So, once you have the acetyl group, acetate then O acetate it forms. Meanwhile, the TMS is intact, only one of them reacts. Okay. So, with this he thought, okay, so after he was successful in doing this, he thought he should extend this to real substrate and for that if he has to use this bayer williger oxidation, the keto group which is present in D ring should be protected. Otherwise, that keto group also can undergo bayer williger oxidation. So, his idea is now to get this keto group protected. So, for that what he did? He started from the starting material before the cyclotrimerization. Then you protect the ketone as a ketol by treating with 1,2-ethane diol or ethylene glycol. So, now you carry out the trimerization. So, here what, what happened? When he did this, you could get 2 is to 1 ratio of the, the required one. Then he did the cyclotrimerization and the cyclotrimerization gave this as the major product, your required one as the major product and this where you can see unbonded series isomer is the minor isomer. Okay. So, now the next step is to take the major isomer and treat with acetyl chloride and aluminum chloride. Okay. But contrary to the model system, when he tried this reaction on this real system, he got complex mixture. 
So, again he has to revise. So, what he did? He simply added bromine and pyridine, bromine and pyridine because that is also known to re replace the TMS group. Okay. So, he wanted to know whether it can be selectively done. So, he re tried to do this reaction with bromine and pyridine and here if you look at this he got a mixture bromine which is at the required place because later this bromine should be replaced as OH that as the minor product 4 is to 1 ok that means the required product is 1 ok. Nevertheless he took the mixture and then tried to replace that ok try to replace it with OH. What you can do? You can treat with butyl lithium. So, once you treat with butyl lithium the CBR bond will be exchanged and then you will get CLI and then treat with trimethyl borate followed by treatment with acetic acid and hydrogen peroxide you can convert that into hydroxyl group ok you can convert that into hydroxyl group. So, now you could separate at this stage. So, once you have polar group you know it is possible to separate. So, you could separate this uh, required compound and the next step is to remove the TMS as well as the keta. If you can remove these two one is proto desilylation, proto desilylation other one is to remove the keta. So, if you can do that then you, you achieve the total synthesis of ester. So, that is very simple and after separating these two he took this compound that is required compound and then treated with mineral acid ok. Once you treat with mineral acid dilute mineral acid. So, the ketal is removed and then TMS also is removed and that gives your S2. So, this is how Wallard completed the total synthesis of S2 and here the key reactions which he used are cyclotrimerization then he also used electrocyclic ring opening of benzocyclobutane followed by intramolecular Diels-Alt reaction IMDA type 1 to construct the ABC ring ok. So, with this I will stop here and then we will continue our discussion tomorrow ok. Thank you.